Hello, it's Duncan. I took a test yesterday and it said that I had the reaction time of a 25 year old. My super speedy brain must be the reason I find it so irritating to sit and wait for tests to complete. My MacBook Air is apparently 5.5 times faster than the equivalent 10 years ago, but I'm pretty sure that building and running the tests on a medium sized project in IntelliJ is much less instant than it was then. Why are my tests so slow? I fear I've been naughty. I'm down the rabbit hole of why tests seem to be taking so long to run. We still have this IntelliJ test runner configuration. Here it is that says apparently the tests take 877 milliseconds to run. Let's try again. OK, over a second that time. But I smell a bit of a rat because when I do run, 1001, 1002, 1000, I mean, I think it's over two seconds, and yet this says it's over and done within 869 milliseconds. This is running the tests with the IntelliJ test runner, the one you get from run tests using IntelliJ. But we also have the Gradle test runner. I have set that up here, Gradle tests in Gilded Rose. Run that, 1001, 1002. Well, that appeared to be a little more than two seconds, but reports five seconds of test time. Something is not right. Now we can see from the test output here that this is using Gradle to run all of its tasks, most of which are up to date, as far as test classes. And then it runs the test task and claims that it all happened in two seconds, which is my perception, not the five seconds it says here. Now, since the last episode, I've discovered the profile option to Gradle. So we can run dot slash Gradle W test minus minus console equals plane minus rerun, and now minus minus profile. And if we do that, we get our build again in two seconds, but we also get a profile report written into our reports directory that we can click on. Here it is. It's not as comprehensive as a full build scan, but it doesn't send all our stuff off to Gradle. And in particular, in task execution here, you can see that most things are up to date, except flyaway migrate, which took 0.123 seconds and test, which took 1.4 bit seconds for a total of 1.5 seconds, rounded up to two, it seems. So I'm forced to conclude that the report of the test run time here, this five seconds, is adding up all the individual test times here rather than the wall time to run them. And that's very different because as we saw in the last episode, JUnit is running our tests in parallel. So if Gradle is over reporting the time spectacularly, why is IntelliJ under-reporting the time spectacularly. And the answer to that is that all we're seeing here is the output from the test runner. We're not seeing the time it takes to build. Now down here is a build tab. And if we look at that, here you can see there's a build output, which is 1515. Let's run the test again. So that's our tests. And on the build tab, you can see, oh, so that's now changed to 1516. So we had a Gradle build here to build the test classes before our test runner could get at it. And this Gradle build took apparently 268 milliseconds. Well, that 268 milliseconds plus 876 is still considerably under the two seconds or so that I counted when I ran the test the first time. So I asked Dmitry Kandilov if there was any way that we could instrument IntelliJ's running of the tests. And he came up with, here's my normal test notification plugin. And if we look in the source of that, you can see he's written some code to connect to the project's message bus subscribing to an execution topic and showing a notification when a run starts and when a run finishes and showing us the time. These live plugin shows end up in this notifications section here. So I've cleared those. And now let's run our IntelliJ build and test. OK, there you go. We started a build for Gilded Rose test that completed in 0.39 seconds. And then we started running the Gilded Rose tests and that took 1.9 seconds. Not, you note, the 700 milliseconds or so that the test runner said. And these two add up to 2.2 seconds or so, which is 1001, 1002, uh, pretty much what I think I'm experiencing. So this shows that when we run tests with IntelliJ, we still have a Gradle build here and then an IntelliJ test run. With a little bit of work, we can persuade this code to show us the time between here and here. Here's one I prepared earlier. I'm not very proud of it. It depends on finding things starting with build. But if we reload this and then look at our notifications and clear them, here we are. You can see we've got action build Gilded Rose started. Then we've got the Gradle build without running the tests. 
Then we've got the run of the test, which takes 1.2 seconds, and the total is 2.2 seconds here. Let's clear that and ask the same question of running the test with Gradle. So that's Gradle tests. And here we go, Gradle tests. That's just one thing, and that took 2.1 seconds. Run again, 2.1 seconds. So I think now we know what's going on. We can get rid of the started debug, get rid of that one and that one, reload, see what we get. And there we go, Gradle tests in Gilded Rose finished in 1.99 seconds that time. And if we run the IntelliJ version, we see the action finished in 2.1. Overall, my experiments on this project at least are that the Gradle runner is slightly quicker than the total of building in Gradle and running with IntelliJ, but the IntelliJ runner is quite a bit more clever. So unfortunately, you have to choose between speed and convenience. Note that one way or the other, both ways of running the tests invoke Gradle, so any way that we could speed that up will be a bonus. Let's have a look at the Gradle run again. And that one. And if we look here, we can see that we're always running this flyaway migrate task. Let's remind ourselves of the build profile results. Here are the old ones, and you can see we're spending over 100 milliseconds running flyaway migrate. It would be nice if we didn't have to do that, and I think there is a way. Here's our build file. Here's where we configure flyaway, and then down here, we say that generate duke depends on flyaway migrate, and this input file says that it only needs to run if the migrations have changed. But that only needs to run is not the flyway migrate itself. We can, though, take tasks named for anything. Here, I'll come back to that. Flyway migrate and say that that's input files are the migrations. So we'll take that. And I suppose any will do in there. I think we can take it out. Yes, we can. Let's see what happens if we run that build. We'll just do it here. Okay, flyway migrate will still run. Will it still run the second time? Yes. So we need to give it an output so that it can compare how old the input is compared to the output in order to decide whether to run. Now the problem with Flyway Migrate is that its output is changing the database. And it's hard to see that, but I think we can reason that this generate duke will run if these files have changed, and that will cause the duke generated files to change. So we might count those as the outputs of the Flyway Migrate task, and they go into build slash generated source duke main. Now I'm sure there's a more elegant way of doing this, but let's just run our build again. We'll take the profile off and see that now Flyway Migrate is up to date. So we didn't run it. Of course, we do want to run it if any migrations change. So let's add one of those. We'll go into resources. Let's copy that file. We'll call it v3 dummy.sql, add that. And I guess altering the table again will be fine. So now let's run our build. And you can see there that Flyway Migrate is run, Generate Juice is run, and other things are up to date. Well, actually quite a bit got recompiled, it seems. But if we run one more time, and I'll do it with the profile, there we go, Flyway Migrate is up to date. And if we look at the profile and the task execution, you'll see that Flyway Migrate was up to date and everything was running 1.5 seconds compared to 1.6, which is kind of what we expect. So that little change should have shaved 100 milliseconds or so off both of our builds. I think we can commit it with Dolt Command K clears when we're in the wrong focus. So we want to delete that. Okay, and this build.gradle no doubt there's a way of removing this duplication by having one task expect another, but I think that will do me for now. So this is going to be speed build by not running flyway migrate every time. Commit. Okay, for my next trick, I think I'm going to go back to the IntelliJ test runner as it's easier to make sense of the test output. So we'll run all in Gilded Rose test. Oh, that was a slow one total of seven seconds, just run again. Obviously, Gradle had some work to do. Goodness me, you're mocking me, run again. Okay, 2.7 seconds we'll have to do, maybe it'll get quicker. Let's have a look at the test run. Here it is. 
And if we look at the individual tests, we're still here with DV items test, 370 milliseconds being the slowest test by really quite a long way. And this claims the runtime of the tests, I guess not including all the JUnit startup gubbins, is 926 milliseconds. Now I think that the order of the tests here is the order in which they started. It's not alphabetical, we can do that. But given that if we turn that off, we do get a stable order. I think in this case it's starting the DB items tests after running a few others, or at least starting a few others. But DB items test is not processor intensive, it's going to be waiting on I.O. So I think if we were to start that earlier, it wouldn't be blocking other things from running, it would just finish earlier. Luckily JUnit has our back. We can set this JUnit Jupyter test class order default configuration parameter to specify a fully qualified class name of a class orderer, and we have class orderer order annotation. So let's remember this. Go to our JUnit platform properties. Add in JUnit test class order default equals, and we want the fully qualified name of order annotation. Who knows where that is? Let's go and find it. Order annotation. Oh, classes. Okay, class order order annotation. Can I click on that? Yes, I can. So it is that thing. Let's take that and paste it into there. And now we can go to our test, which is DB items tests. And in here we can add an order and we set that to zero to say that it's the first one we want run. Let's have a look. Oh, what have I done? Oh, it should be a dollar order annotation because you know. And now our DB items test is being run first. It's still taking 304 milliseconds, but the total test run time is 880. We know that's not really true, but it has come down from the 900 or so before. So I think if you have any IO bound slow tests, that's a bit of a no brainer. Of course, what we'd really like is for JUnit to be optimizing those things for us. I'd put that on my Christmas list, but I fear I've been naughty. We'll commit that with run DB items tests first to speed test run. Good. One last little look at how long everything takes. 2.6 seconds, 2.5 seconds, 2.1 seconds. I'm not totally convinced it's any quicker, to be honest with you. We'll just check out the build. Yep, everything was skipped or up to date, so I think that was as fast as we could make it. And the tests say they're only 887, so we seem to have speeded up the constituents, but overall nothing has actually got much quicker. Never mind. I think we've probably done enough for today. Next week I plan to look into what on earth the computer is doing for 332 milliseconds running these DB items tests, see whether we can speed those up, or at the very least learn something about database performance. If you'd like to see that, then please subscribe to the channel. If you've enjoyed this, then please press the like button. Don't worry, that will do. It's the only gift I want for Christmas. Although maybe someone you love would like a copy of the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.